Molex Fine Adjust applicators are easy to install, set up, operate, and maintain. In this video, we're going to set up a Fine Adjust applicator for bench press operation. If you are using a Minimac, Fine Adjust, or FA2 applicator, the basic setup instructions in this video apply as well. To reference specific instructions for your applicator, please see the tooling manual that accompanied your specific applicator. If you don't have the manual or still have questions after viewing this video, look up your applicator by part number on molex.com and find the link for your manual. Or call the tooling group directly at 402-458-8665. Always perform a delivery check when your applicator arrives. Remove the Fine Adjust applicator from its shipping container and make sure the following items are included in the packaging. The Fine Adjust applicator, tooled for the desired terminal, sample crimped terminals, and crimp tooling accessories. You also have the crimp quality manual included with the applicator, tooling manual, and ATS specification sheets on hand for reference and review before setting up your applicator. When the applicator is in storage, being transported, or not in the press, always use the RAM spacer or the RAM storage screw that came with the applicator tooling accessories. With all materials in place, ensure your press is compatible and ready for your Molex applicator setup. First, clear any debris and dirt from the base plate and T-shaped RAM mount. If applicable, make sure the press is in single index mode. Ensure it is in full cycle mode if applicable. If you have an air feed applicator, your air supply should be at 80 PSI. Ensure the press is plugged into the appropriate 120-240 volt AC power source. Next, make sure the press shut height is set at the industry standard of 135.8 millimeters or 5.346 inches. You will find detailed instructions in the Fine Adjust Manual, Section 2.1. To avoid possible damage to your tooling, do not install the applicator until the shut height is correct. With the press power disconnected, place a shut height gauge on the mounting plate of the press. Manually cycle the press to the fully down strike position and read the shut height gauge. It should read zero. If adjustment is necessary, refer to the press manufacturer's instruction manual to adjust the shut height. As shipped, most Molex applicators are set up for bench crimping. For automatic wire processing applications, please refer to the manual for your specific applicator. The final step before installing the applicator is to check the punch and anvil alignment. Make note of the applicator cam settings. The insulation crimp cam setting should be 1 and the conductor cam setting should be A. Are the anvils and punches aligned? Is the lower tooling alignment centered? If so, you are ready to install the applicator. If you have not done so previously, disconnect the press from power. Slide the applicator into the press yoke. Pull the applicator downward and slide it to the left so that it engages the guide stops and remove the RAM spacer. Lock the locator in place by turning the M5 SHCS bolt counterclockwise until tight. To avoid potential tool damage, hand cycle the applicator in the press at least five times before going under press power. If you feel any resistance, stop and reverse direction and check your alignment again to avoid damage to the applicator. To make sure that the terminals and applicator are designed to be compatible, compare the part number on the terminal reel to the compatibility chart in the ATS for your specific applicator. Mount the terminal reel to spindle. Recheck the applicator cam settings and adjust the insulation crimp cam to 1 and the conductor crimp cam to A. Now, rotate the drag release so that the drag frame is in the upright position. Push the terminal strip until the first terminal comes to rest centered above the anvil. 
Check that all the other parts slide and engage without any interference. Do this procedure several times. The terminal strip should move with some resistance, but not so much that the strip bends when pushing by hand, and so that any forward or back axis movement is not transmitted from the left side of the applicator to the right. See section 2.3 in the Fine Adjust Manual for adjustments or to determine if the track is binding on the feed finger. Rotate the drag release to engage the terminal drag frame and cycle the press by hand so that the feed finger transfers the next terminal to a centered position over the anvil. If the feed finger does not properly engage and advance the strip or does not move back properly to engage the previous hole, you may need to make feed finger and backstroke adjustments. You can find them in section 2.1 of your manual. Give a final check of applicator cam settings to make sure they are set at 1 for the insulation crimp cam and position A for the conductor crimp cam. Hand cycle the press approximately halfway and check the alignment of terminals to punches and anvils. You may have to use a small screwdriver or other similar tool to hold the cutoff plunger down and out of the way if it is installed in your applicator. If the alignment looks good, remove the hand cycle wrench. If adjustment is necessary, see feed adjustments in section 2.3 of your manual. Power up the press, engage all safety guards, and press the motor run button. Cycle the press at production speed. Make sure the carrier advances and the terminal is cut from the carrier strip. The crimp will be open because the cams are set to the highest open setting. To make crimp adjustments, first ensure the press is powered and ensure that all guards are in place. Referencing the included ATS, strip a suitable wire to the appropriate length and terminate the wire into a terminal with press under power. Compare crimp height of the crimped terminal to the ATS recommended range. If adjustments are necessary, turn off and disconnect the power supply from the press and remove the machine guards. The desired crimp height can be achieved by rotating the conductor adjusting cam. Each increment represents approximately 0.015 millimeters or 0 0.0006 inches for a total adjustment of 1.8 millimeters or 0 0.071 inches. The A setting is the loosest and the N setting is the tightest. To prevent possible tooling damage, make small adjustments and check crimp height. Replace the guards, connect the press to power and terminate a wire into a terminal. Measure and adjust until the desired crimp height is obtained. Important note here. Do not shim the applicator. Perform a pull test on the conductor crimp to verify the mechanical integrity of the crimp. Then, compare the results to the pull force specifications contained in the ATS document. Molex does not typically specify insulation crimp height, but for each different wire type, the insulation crimp height can be measured, recorded, and inspected as a quality indicator. To adjust the insulation crimp, rotate the insulation adjusting cam to achieve the desired insulation crimp. Each increment represents approximately 0.06 millimeters or 0 0.0025 inches. The one setting is the highest or loosest crimp height and the 29 setting is the lowest or tightest crimp. There are a number of other adjustments that you may need to make for each of them, ensure the press is powered up and the guards are in place. Referencing your ATS, strip a suitable wire to the appropriate length and terminate the wire to a terminal. To see if the terminal bell mouth and cutoff tab need adjustment, observe the quality and size of the bell mouth and compare them to the specifications contained in the appropriate ATS. If the bell mouth is not to specification, Turn off and disconnect the power supply from the press and remove machine guards. Refer to your manual for detailed procedure instructions. For potential conductor brush adjustments, observe the brush length 
and compare it to the specifications contained in the appropriate ATS. If adjustments to the wire stop are required, refer to your manual for detailed procedure instructions. It's key that the wire stop never comes in contact with the back of the conductor punch. Use a small shim when adjusting to avoid contact. In addition, check the insulation position window for quality and location. If strip length is accurate to the ATS, the window should be in the correct position. Finally, visually inspect the crimp condition for symmetry, bend up, bend down, twist, and any other deformities. If issues or concerns are observed, reference the troubleshooting section of the applicator manual that is included with your applicator or at molex.com. We hope this video was useful in setting up your applicator. If you have additional questions, you may also call the Application Tooling Group directly at 402-458-8665.